For more on the story, we can bring in our international affairs commentator, Douglas Herbert. Doug, we just heard there from John Kerry, from what he was saying, why mm -hmm. hasn't the Security Council been talking about climate change in the past? Well, guess what? Surprise, surprise, Delano. They actually have spoken about it in the past. Um, 14 years ago, they spoke about it. At, uh, for the, really the first time, it was back in April 2007. There was a, a session called Then As Now Under the Helm of the United Kingdom, which was also the president of the council in that month. Um, and it was a session during which the French called climate change uh, the number one uh, threat facing basically mankind. Uh, you had small island nations at that session, such as Papua New Guinea, basically saying that the dangers that uh, small islands such as them are facing from rising seas and, and heating planet uh, are tantamount, are really on a par with what other countries face from, say, guns and bombs and conventional warfare. So this notion that climate and world peace and security are all very, very inextricably, very closely linked. It's not a new one. But obviously, as the years go by, and we've been seeing more frequent and perhaps also harsher climate phenomena, you know, more types of extreme weather uh, in more places happening with greater frequency, uh, people are more and more waking up to this phenomenon. Uh, you know, basically what you have is the types of things that climate change trigger. You know, you have floods, you have diseases, you have famine. Those in turn trigger mass displacement of population migrations as people struggle to search for uh, the sustenance to live. You have droughts and crop failures. That leads to an intensified competition for food and water and energy and other scarce resources. You have economic upheaval. And then you have a lot of young people in a lot of very poor and vulnerable regions often who become ripe targets for recruiting for warlords, by warlords, by jihadists, especially in certain parts of Africa. So climate and security, they are not just, you know, sort of separate. They are inextricably linked. You can't really talk these days about one without talking about the other. So given that, that you know, world leaders will be trying to make this link between climate change and, and security, where is climate change sparking conflict currently? Yeah. Well, I mentioned, you know, uh, as far as conflict, the problem is it's a double whammy. It's a one-two punch. Both conflict sometimes already exists, and then climate change comes along and makes it worse. It exacerbates the situation. So they often work in a symbiotic way together to really make people's lives more miserable. We're seeing it in regions, Central Africa, the Lake Chad region, where you have increasing competition and uh, fought over scarce resources, food, uh, production of animal feed for people's livestock, uh, leading to also displacements of populations. The Sahel region of Africa, uh, an area of Africa just below the, uh, the Sahara, uh, a de desertified uh, area, we often cover it. Uh, environmental degradation, scarcer and scarcer resources, the, the, the de desert becoming drier and hotter, that's leading to people having to migrate in, in search of sustenance. Countries such as Yemen, such as Iraq, where you have existing conflicts, Somalia, um, you have climate change um, and all of the aggravating factors behind it leading to scarcer resources and making already existing uh, vulnerable places, uh, conflicts in vulnerable places, even worse. And this is just a tiny short list of places. But anywhere where you basically have often poorer populations, more vulnerable populations, you have that combination of conflicts or ready-to-happen conflicts that are made worse by very, very very extreme and worsening weather conditions. So watch this space. This isn't going away anytime soon. Climate, security, and often, unfortunately, the poorest and the least prepared financially to deal with the consequences of climate change are the hardest hit and the ones who have to suffer on the receiving end of the first of this violence and conflict and war. Indeed. Douglas, thank you very much for that, Douglas Herbert there.